Let's get straight to our market panel. Joining us now, Anne Maletti from Allspring Global Investments and Jeff Bookbinder from LPL Financial. Uh, guys, welcome. And um, the Russell kind of outperformed today. What's going on with this kind of uh, difference in the way the, the indices are responded? Are, are we waiting for another piece of information, perhaps even next week's jobs report? Look, I think the market's constantly waiting for data, and investors are as well. Um, and it's been a little bit of a roller coaster ride. You get good data, the market reacts to that, and then some challenging data, and the market reacts to that. But it's all dependent on the data and what the Fed's going to do. Look, we've been in the camp that the Fed still has some work to do, that they're going to continue to raise rates. Um, and that likely will take us into a recession probably won't be a very deep one, but we will get there. And so we have been in the camp of, let's just be cautious about the types of stocks we buy. That didn't mean we wanted to stay away from small or mid cap. In fact, we've been telling our investors that they should look outside of those big cap names that have been, you know, maybe um, too popular right. because the risk reward just wasn't as favorable. And okay. if you look down cap, the valuations were much more attractive. Jeff, how about that GDP revision, though? I mean, um, I know you're saying you think the market needs a breather, but it can also keep marching higher. So what do investors do here if the market needs a breather, but perhaps isn't taking one? Yeah, John, it depends on your time frame, right? So, you know, there's certainly a number of reasons to think this bull keeps on running, right? I mean, it's been a confirmed real bull market. We've seen higher highs and higher lows. We, of course, got the 20% move off of the October lows last fall. We're seeing cyclical sectors do better than the defensives. You know, in particular, consumer discretionary versus consumer staples has broken out uh, to a new 52-week high. Uh, so that tells you this is a real bull. And if you look at history, you know, eight-month-old bulls are typically up 25% or so. We're following that playbook. Uh, we're up about 23% in this young bull. Uh, if you look at uh, how stocks perform off of mid-year election year lows, up about 30% historically. Maybe that's a little too much to expect this time, uh, but certainly we could uh, see some gains around the uh, presidential cycle. Okay. Uh, you know, there's a number of reasons to think that we, we keep running, even though, yeah, sure, on a short-term basis, we're a little bit hot. All right, Ann, you say you see opportunity in emerging markets, um, which ones? I mean, because you, you, these, these baskets have a whole lot of different uh, countries in them, different regions that can have a whole lot of different issues, and sometimes uh, they conflict with each other. They do. And, and what I'm hearing from our investment teams um, that specialize in emerging markets is to look for very unique opportunities. And specifically, they're looking at the countries that, you know, had peak inflation, peak rates early in the cycle, and that headwind is now becoming a tailwind. So take Brazil, for example. They you know, saw in interest rates um, go up substantially after seeing inflation go to the mid-teens level. That is now they're taking rates down. And so that very strong headwind is turning into a tailwind. So while that might take some time to work, it certainly is going in the right direction. You know, also, John, as you know, and as you all talk about so often, the dollar plays a very big factor into emerging markets. And the dollar has been significantly strong in 2021 and 2022. If that just flattens out, it, it, it again, creates that headwind and um, it, it flattens out and it becomes less of a headwind, more of a tailwind for emerging markets as we go through the 2023 and beyond.